So when we last were with you, the three stooges here were lowering the headstock off of the lathe bed. And uh, what we're setting it on on the backside there that you can't see is actually a set of uh, planks that the Rustin Hornsby engine uh, came uh, strapped to. So you need to check out those videos because we moved that engine onto a permanent foundation uh, earlier this year. We were trying to move the headstock there further away from the lathe bed just for weight distribution purposes. I wanted to keep the lathe bed kind of over the uh, sawhorse legs that are on the near side of the screen and then going to push the headstock towards the back side of the screen. But it didn't want to move. Uh, so it's got a wood base there. It's a couple of 2x12s with 1 by planking across the top. Like I said, that was the uh, Rustin Hornsby diesel engine was sitting on that. And it doesn't want to slide very well at all on the uh, channel uh, tops of the, of the sawhorses. My son got on me for putting these things upside down, but I did it for a reason. And that is to lay in a 2x4 uh, into the inside of the channel, uh, which will project up higher and uh, protect the underside of the lathe bed when we're painting it. So I use the strap clamps here and just the, uh, you know, the tightening buckle as a two to one advantage to pull that uh, headstock and get it over, over the other side of the legs. Well, so I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself, and I brought the uh, four-inch grinder over here, put a wire wheel on it. I'm going to try cleaning up the uh, bed rails here on the lathe just to see how, how they look. I know I felt a couple of little raised burrs here and there, so I'll stone those down. Maybe it's one of the last days you'll hear the generator run, too, because I went on, checked the status of my work order for Virginia Power, and actually saw one more little green box ticked off by the project manager, so I think they're getting closer to actually uh, getting my power hooked up. I wasn't too worried about using a wire brush on the ways. The Monarchs have hardened bedways, and I can about guarantee that the brushes in the in the brush heads are not as hard as the surface of the way itself. So it's, you know, kind of like using a, a brass brush on mild steel. So I had two wheels. I had a knotted uh, flat wheel and a knotted uh, cup wheel, and I switched back and forth because there's just so many different facets, especially on those triangular V-ways, trying to get the sides and the peak and the, and the front edge. Uh, and then, uh, you know, repeating that same on the back. And, of course, you got to get the flat ways and the side surfaces of the flat ways. And at some point, going to have to get the underside surfaces of the flat ways. I didn't really do too good of a job on that at this point. But... Uh, uh, had to get all the grime and grunge off of there from how many years of sitting so that I could uh, more evaluate, you know, uh, the condition of them. And found a couple of little raised burrs that uh, I was able to stone down. And there's just a couple of little bites um, on the surface of the ways where, where stuff had nicked it or gouged it. I, I really can't discern any, any wear, but I will do a proper evaluation of that in the upcoming videos. Now, basically, going to see if there are any burrs anywhere. Oh, yeah. 
theorem right here. A little bite out of the flat way there. At this point, and that's where the tailstock rides, I don't think the tailstock could come up that far, but it's something, a piece of work that I'm not into it here. stone. Now instead of an 8 inch stone I've got a 5 inch and a 3 inch. Oh well. This is something I didn't know was there until after I cleaned it up. Hope you can read that. Inspected by JRB, lot number CW11228, DPC216. Well, thank you, JRB. Like uh, 70 years later, 50, you see, 41, 1941. 2001, 60, 70, almost 80 years later, your lathe is going back into service. Been dying to do this. That just feels so nice. I think I'll give it one last wipe down and then uh, give it a good coating of WD-40. Try to stay ahead of the rust. So we've got more parts of the Monarch disassembled and ready to be worked on. We've got the apron assembly with the lead screw and the feed rod. And we've got the saddle uh, set nicely on the bench, ready to be cleaned. And we've got the electrical system over here that needs a thorough cleaning, but inside is basically just fine. Everything seems to be pretty good on the back side of the lathe. The, uh, uh, I forget what you call the dial that uh, tells you, you know, when to engage your half nuts. I thought that that thing was really worn, but I, I think that the, teeth on that are pretty good and I'm hoping the really crossing my fingers hoping the half nuts are in good shape under there they're kind of stuck so they're going to need to get freed up and uh, get that uh, uh, you know threading screw out of there and we'll see the condition of all those parts on the back side yeah the word I was looking for was threading dial 
So this is where uh, I wanted to put in two by fours in inside the channels. I, I had to rip a little bit off the width of the two by four to make it fit down in there, but I have to um, jack up each end of the lathe so it's kind of <laughs> sitting up there on a on a vertical post, just enough to get that two by four in uh, underneath uh, underneath the bed. And then you know when I flip this thing on the side or on the front face, at least it's going to be uh, resting against, uh, you know, soft pine. So that when I get the primer and the paint on here, I'll be able to, you know, move it around and get all four sides of the lathe bed painted without scuffing it, hopefully. And that was my reason for putting the saw, you know, the C channels leg up on these, uh, saw horses. And I'm moving over to the backside, just going to repeat the process back there. Based on how rusty the chip pan was, I was real afraid that the sump was going to be all pitted and rotted out, uh, maybe even have some pinholes in it. But uh, the further I got into this, it was, it was a pleasant surprise. And once again, like I say about engines, you know, grease and grime are your friends. Uh, if you've got a, something that's, you know, been, been greasy and dirty, that preserves the surface because under the... Uh, coating of stuff in these in these sumps you know I was getting down to bare shiny metal and no signs of pitting or corrosion so obviously this thing had uh, a good amount of coolant you know an oil-based coolant in it um, enough to overcome any uh, issues with the with the water from it sitting out in the in the woods uh, basically just got all these cavities cleaned out of chips and what looked like sawdust I mean, most of it had to be scraped out so that the vacuum would even pick it up, but uh, I'm very, very pleased with the results. So, caught a break on this chip pan, which is in fabulous condition. I mean, obviously they kept coolant in it, and the amount of water that got in was not a big deal. And that fresh metal surfaces on the on the uh, angles there that support the cover plates. So it looks like we'll be dealing with just minor surface rust. Building up a little cache of stuff here. Long quarter 20 bolt, a nice chuck key. Big old chip. Piece of aluminum, some kind of a, a V-way clamp, a center couple of these uh, inserts. I don't know what these are for. Piece of stock. Uh, actually this had maybe some kind of a clamp. And a blue anodized uh, looks like half NPT to maybe quarter. Some kind of fitting. So we'll continue on this here. And then it'll be ready for sandblasting. These had me a little worried, but uh, turns out I didn't need to be. The jam nuts are pretty crusty. Those might not survive being removed, but uh, we can give it a try. We can put an open end or a box end wrench on them and see if they will uh, if they will move. Everything's one and a sixteenth, I believe. Bottom. 
bottoms of these sort of a like a turn down end to I'm going to make some nice uh, thrust you know washers to go against the floor. One that's stuck. Okay, so we got one that is almost out, but has gotten so tight it won't move. And we've gotten one that won't budge from the get-go. So uh, I'll bring a torch over, add a little heat. Um, hopefully sitting here with the blaster uh, will we'll help it. It's a lot of cast iron. It's going to be tough to get any amount of temperature rise in it to get those out but we'll get them we'll get them out we'll run a tap through them three quarter inch fine thread um, and then uh, get those GM nuts off the bolts and we'll be ready to put all that back together once we clean all the rust and scale off these pieces <laughs> 